foundations, how to set up your skin so that it looks great and you feel great and it really takes the rest of your makeup perfectly. Join me. Here I am naked for you so I can show you how to start layering things for your skin and your makeup and so you could go out in your day with the correct foundations. It's funny, if you remember the old time, department stores used to call foundations, they were girdles and bras and all the undergarments because you set a good foundation before you put on your nice dress to make your figure look as good as possible. Today we have the Spanx, which, uh, which are helpful at times. So anyway, back to this. Foundations. So let me tell you how I start. After a clean face and put on whatever product you want to use, I really don't use anything after that because the moisturizer I use is sunscreen and I've been using this brand for many, many years. I put sunscreen on. You know, everyone knows how to put on their sunscreen. Everywhere. Everywhere. Now, here is a little trick. Some people mix their foundation with their moisturizer. What I do is I just make sure that my moisturizer is still a little wet, damp, because this isn't wet, wet, before I put on my foundation. Now, even before I put on my face foundation, I put on, I do a little stuff on my eyes. Now, I want to pause to say, don't not go still to department stores. Sephora is really fun, but there are still different products in department stores that you may not think of. For example, I realized that the Trish McAvoy brand is still around and I hadn't used it in a long time, so I didn't know what they had. And listen, just be open. Don't worry about having to buy stuff if someone helps you, but it's a really good education to let these people who know so much about their brands show you. They know you're not necessarily going to buy everything there, but just be open. For example, this wonderful, wonderful makeup artist for Trish McAvoy, Rena Antebi, told me about a concealer that is more than a concealer, and I've since used it on a lot of shoots when I've worked as a makeup artist. It pretty much just reflects up because when I'm making up men for on camera, they don't want to have this like, you know, white stuff, which nobody does, right, under your eyes. And I found that even with me, when I see pictures of myself where I've done regular concealer and then I've done this, there's a real difference. So I start after you put on your moisturizer, I start with this, it's called Eye Lift. And it it just goes, I'm gonna look over here so I know what I'm doing. Over here, just a couple dots. And then you take your brush, remember this guy? Now I'm gonna use this. And you just go up and almost like a triangle there. Now I want you to see what's happening because I have nothing on my skin. It's just getting rid of like a little bit of darkness, maybe a little discoloration. Now I have the opposite problem of a lot of people and that is sometimes it's too white under my eyes. I know it's crazy because I started wearing sunglasses from the time I was really little. So I didn't get any darkness or pigmentation under there. So sometimes I actually have to bring it up to the color of my skin. Any shoot I've ever done, they've been like, Oh, we have to darken it under your eyes. That's crazy. Okay, then an eyelid base. Now, some people just use their foundation. Again, this is a Trish McAvoy product that Rena told me about called Bear. And it just goes right on your lids. Blip, blip, just a little bit. And I take the same little brush. I'm telling you, I use this all the time. And I just smooth this out all the way up to the brow bone. Now, what does that do? that sets a, not just a color, but a feeling. So it makes it dry, but not crackly dry. It just sets it up. It's like spackling your walls first, although that's a nice, a nice effect to talk about spackling your face. Uh, so then we have that. Now the other thing I do that's a little out of the ordinary is, because I'm a little older and because sometimes my eyeliner might gravitate to up here, 
I take a little bit of this poreless, this is a Tarte product, and I put this here. It's it's also a, uh, it's a silicone, I believe it's a silicone base that a lot of people also put on their faces to make things nice and smooth. I use it, I have a little large pour over here. I do this at the end though. You might see it, where is it? Right here. To me, it's a manhole, but it's probably not that big. But when I'm done, I put it here. But right now I put it up on my eyes. Now we do the foundation. This could go quickly. This has no fear involved in it. You do not have to be afraid, but you need to get the right shade. And that's another time. You could go to a Sephora or you could go to a department store. And a lot of things are done computerized now where they take a sample of your, your skin color and the rest of you, because I have a lot of red in my skin, so I'm not gonna wanna pick up that red. I'm gonna wanna neutralize that red. And I found that I'm like a, a neutral, like a light neutral or a neutral beige. I'm on the light side. I don't wanna go too light. I once had a secretary when I worked in advertising that did like a kabuki face first. It was frightening. She would come in with a white face, red lips, painted. She was a wonderful person, but no one told her that you don't go all white there. So you don't wanna do that. Okay, so uh, I have this foundation. This is by IT. What I love about it, it's it's a full coverage, but it doesn't look, it doesn't feel cakey. It doesn't, it's not too heavy, and I can really spread it out nicely with my brushes. So I take a little of this, I put it on my thumb, and I take that flat brush, and now I'll just paint everywhere. I'll paint around, do you see already it's covering up any redness? Uh, they also make a product called Bye Bye Redness that is really great that you could wear it alone or under all of this. So you just want to get everywhere here, everywhere here, pick up my hair, bring it here. How's that looking? Yeah, not bad and my nose. I don't know why I have redness, but I'll tell you one thing that I discovered. I used to use an exfoliating uh, face wash in the shower like every night, and my, my redness was getting worse, and I was at my dermatologist for something else, and I asked him about it, and he told me I had a little rosacea, which shocked me. I didn't know I had that. So I stopped using the exfoliant wash with the little grains completely, and guess what went away? Most of my redness. I used to have like a lot of um, like little veiny things there, and that went away. I didn't realize I was irritating it. Now one thing that's important also, now I did my eyes already, so I'm gonna stay away. Some people also put this under their eyes and then a concealer, and then that's when it starts cracking and just we don't want anything to make us look older, okay? You just want to have a luminescent skin, which has a nice cover to it. What I also like about foundation, I do do my lips, uh -huh. foundations these days is they don't dry hard, they don't crack. I mean, it's amazing the technology in makeup now, but I will say this, something that got me a little peeved. There was a foundation I think it was by Tarte, that was a mousse foundation. You needed a tiny bit and it went and they discontinued it. And I, maybe because I didn't have to, I think it lasted a year and a half and now it's gone and that makes me crazy. So one thing that you have to remember, did you see how little I put on here? Just a tiny little pump because with the sunscreen, slash moisturizer, you, it will spread it out nicely. Now, one thing you wanna do I'm not saying do your whole neck and chest, which sometimes when I'm on shoots, they do do this because I have a little redness, but it's you and me, who cares? You just don't want to have a line. You don't want to have a mask like my old secretary had. Oh, I wonder what's going on with Wendy. That was so sad. Okay, so good. So it's a nice coverage. I want to tell you something else you can do. If I've done my sunscreen and I'm doing my hair and whatever and my skin is a little dry, there's a wonderful product. This is from Tarte also. I used to call it oil. 
It's maracuja oil. People use this as like a night cream. People use it for lots of things. What I do, and usually do when I'm done with my powder and everything, if I'm feeling or looking dry, I put one drop on my middle finger, dot around, and then just do one of these, and it takes the dryness away because that is aging when we look dry. Now, after you do this, oh, that's everywhere. Do you see it just evens out the skin tone? Let me just look over here. No, a little bit. As I mentioned, I take this brush and I just make sure I go over everything. So I know everything is in. And sometimes I just use this to put on the makeup and just dot it like this. Okay, so now I think I have the foundation. You see the difference already? It's amazing. And it, I've been talking a lot, so it's longer than I usually take, but it's usually on in a few seconds for me. And now I have our beauty blender. It's damp, I squeezed it out, and now I just bounce over my skin. Now, I don't know if you're going to see the difference from there, but I'm telling you, it pulls up micro amounts of this foundation. And now it's even, let me see, it's even. I'll even go in here a little bit and see if I need to pull that off. So my eyelids are ready, I'm ready under here. And next we're gonna do powder. People are afraid of powder because they don't wanna get that cakey look. You don't have to get the cakey look anymore, but if you really want a light dusting, I say go with a loose powder because the pressed powder, you put it on and sometimes people feel they get too much. Now also, when you're reading the reviews, and read the reviews with all these products that you're thinking about getting, but take it with a little grain of salt because before I bought this powder online, people said, oh, it's terrible, I put it on and I was white. Well, you were white because you used the wrong brush and you put on too much, okay? So let me show you how this is a loose powder. This is a very old pressed powder that I still use. And this is the little puff that comes with the loose powder. And this is the brush I mainly use for the loose powder. Let me show you. So what you do with the loose powder, what I do, is I shake it a little bit. You see it coming up? Or you put the lid on, put the lid on, shake it, turn it over, back, ah, and there'll be more than enough powder that you need for today. I love all this smoke. You take your fan brush, it's called a fan brush, and get a good one. Just dot it around, and now you're just gonna lightly go over your face with this, just dusting like, ah, as if you're tickling your skin. <laughs> tickle, tickle. And what's nice about this is not too much will go on, but you can now really kind of, I say like rake it over your, your face, go a little deeper to get it in more. So you put it on the first time with the tickle, and now you're putting it on a little deeper with this, and you can even pat around different places. And if there are areas that feel like you want a little more powder coverage, then you take your puff, you dip it in the powder and just like with my chin and around my nose and on my nose, I just press this in. So there is your foundation. I told you, quick, easy, fun, effortless. That's the way you should treat your makeup application. It's not something to be afraid of. Now, this is when I'm saying like, what if I feel like this got too dry, I'm really pressing around and it's like, uh-oh, what do I do? This is when I take the machachachacha oil and I take one drop, it comes in a dropper, I put it on my middle finger. I don't know why, but I find that that's what I do. And now watch. I just go over. I don't know what's in here, this little bottle of magic. I buy the travel size because it lasts so long. And now look, it gives a little glow. 
and it takes away any feeling that maybe that this is old looking and dried and cracked. Lovely. And as I said, some people use it as like a night oil. I use it as my, uh-oh, I don't like the way that looks. How do I change it? And then I put a little. And also, you know, when you know you have something that can correct something that goes wrong, you can relax. It's not like, all right, if I do this wrong, now I have to go out and I'm not going to feel good about it. You don't have to worry about that. There's always something that will help you without having to take off all your makeup. So I have this on and I'm ready now to go. We're going to do a little of the C word, contouring. Some people see that as a nasty, dirty word because you're looking at some of the younger girls and their videos where they spend a lot of time doing contour with the highlight and the dark and the here and make your note. We're not going to do that. You know my motto. We are who we are and we're grateful to be here. We just want to look as good as we can look. That's one of my mottos. The other is fast, quick, easy, fearless makeup. I'm going to show you what I do. I use very little contour. But so I have these cheekbones and I like them to be a little more pronounced. So what I do is I take a palette that looks like this and you can see what I've used the most, which is that. This is a cream contour. I haven't tried the powder yet. So I will let you know because I'm really happy with this. So there's one that's for under eye darkness, which luckily I don't have, so I don't use that. Some people, this is what's gone first. This is a neutralizer for redness, and I'm going to show you. I use that one, and I use this one. Sometimes th this can be concealers also. I really like the one that I told you about. I love that eye lift. It's fantastic. Uh, and you see, and it has its own little sponge there too. It's great. So let me show you what I do with this. So I use the brush that I said was up to you to get. You can use another brush. I really like this. So I use this end and I dot, 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 dot in here. And I make the, oh, that's sour. Oh, could it ever drink that face, which is delightful. And I follow that line. Oh, oh, that's a sour, sour drink. And I shall go up. Oh, that drink is sour. Oh, so sour. Or the old witch face. There, now, now look what I have. And I didn't even put my blush on yet. So all it does is give just a little contour in here. It's our secret. Nobody knows that my cheekbones aren't quite that high. And then what I'll do is I'll go over another little dusting of the powder just to set that. And there's one contour, and I'll show you the other thing I do. I take my handy dandy brush, and I take my palette, and I go into that green thing. You know, a lot of makeup companies make a green base that you put on a primer, I should say, that you put on first and it takes all the redness away. I don't feel I need that. If you do go, again, go to a Sephora, go to a, a department store and let them show you. Like Lourdes Smashbox makes a great one of those. So I'm just dotting here. Now look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go here on the side of my nose what they call the marionette line. Isn't that lovely when those start getting lined? And go down in that line, and I don't know if you can see what this has done. It just adds a little brightness. It just lifts everything up just a little bit. What do you think? Fast and easy. And the other contouring I do is with this yellow. And I'm going to do a little contouring on my nosey, nosey, nosey. So I put a little of this yellow, and I'm just going to go a little bit down the center of my nose, just a little bit, just a little bit. And then I'm going to brush it just a little bit. And then I'm going to take a little of the dark, and I'm just going to make sure I didn't do too much yellow. 
and just even that out. And guess what? I'm done with contouring. I don't put highlighter here. I don't do all of that. I'm done. And now you're ready to do your eyes, your lips, your cheeks, and then finish with a setting spray. And why I like this setting spray, this was, a, I think, a Sephora thing. Who makes this? Urban Decay. It smells nice. Smells like an interesting candy. That's not why I use it. I hadn't for a long time, and I was doing a lot of shooting this summer, and people on camera that I was making up. A little bit of this, it actually makes the makeup stay all day. And I told you, I don't search out a mirror, and when I come home, sometimes I'm horrified. But not when I do some kind of setting spray. It's, it's a little step. It goes a long way, a little bottle. But you're good to go, and now that this is done, then I can have the fun part, which is painting eyes and cheeks and lips, and then I'm out the door. Start with a good foundation, and everything else is just a piece of cake. A piece of cake that doesn't make you fat. I'm gonna cut that. <laughs> I'll see you next time, because I'm Jill Moray, and you are still gorgeous, with or without makeup. If you like this episode, there are going to be lots more to come. So like and subscribe and tell all your friends. <laughs>